I'm going to call now uh, our very own representative, Robert Reeves. Come on, let's give it up. This is my fraternity brother. God bless you, man. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, one thing I can tell you about today is it's hot. Good Lord. Um, I, I'm listening to my fat frat brother, so I'm going to try to keep it short. Y'all know he didn't say that until I got up here. But it's cool. <laughs> um, I tell you, I'd love to tell you right now that uh, I'm feeling good and I'm happy. I'm not. I'm still angry. Uh, I'm still mad with myself that I'm angry. And I try to limit that, and I try not to think about what happened, because every time I think about what happened, I get more angry. But the good thing is I get to see a crowd like this, and it makes me happy. And I'll tell you what else makes me happy is it seems like our country has finally had its road to Damascus moment. After all these years and all these things and all these problems that we have talked and talked about, suddenly it seems like it might have finally hit. And that makes me happy. But my question is, not for the rest of the country only, but for us. Now what are we going to do? Because I always think about the road to Damascus. I mean, for me, that was a powerful story when I was coming up and, and when I would listen to the pastor say it. And I never get tired of hearing the story. You know, it talks about Saul. And Saul, when you really read through the Bible, I mean, Saul's kind of like all of us. You know, when, he, when, when Paul starts writing in the Bible, he, he kind of grows over the little stuff that he was doing. But Saul was an evil man. Saul took pleasure in persecuting people who were not like him. Saul took pleasure in persecuting people who he felt were changing his country. Persecuting people who, in his opinion, were getting things away from how it was when his fathers were around. That's right. Those are Saul's words. Saul participated in the execution of Stephen. Don't forget that. He did a lot of bad stuff, and when he had his road to Damascus moment, he was on his way to go get some more Christians for questioning and potential execution. But then came that blinding light. And then came that voice, and Saul fell on his knees, and when he got back up, he was Paul. But I don't think we ever give enough detail to the story, because guess what? There were some other people on the road, too. Three other men out there with Saul. They heard the sound. Yes, they, did. they saw the light. Yes, they did. But they didn't change, right. because they couldn't hear the voice of Jesus. So my question is, who are we going to be? Are we going to be Saul that now becomes Paul? Are we going to change our ways? Are we going to stop with our excuses about how we don't participate in government? My vote doesn't matter. They're all the same. Ain't nobody going to make a difference. Or have we decided now that we're going to be Paul and we're going to take this energy and we're going to take this time and we're going to put this into changing our government. Because let me be clear about one thing. Mr. Floyd wasn't murdered just last week. Mr. Floyd got murdered years ago. He got murdered when we let this country change right under us. He got murdered when we let George Wallace win. And for those of you who don't know George Wallace, go read your history books. Because it means something when George Wallace wins. It changes the way your government sounds. It changes the way your government approaches you. It changes the way your government views you. And when we let George Wallace win some years ago, what we did is we took people who at one point in time in our communities were considered outcasts, people who behaved aberrantly, and suddenly we told them they were OK. That was okay to hate people that don't look like you. Right. That it's okay to demean people yeah. who don't belong to your religion. Uh -huh. 
that it's okay to treat people different because of something you perceive that doesn't put them in your club. And we gave them safe harbor because we elected them to office. So if you want to see some change, then you've got to take the energy that we've got right now and make a change. Tell your leaders what's important to you. Because when I hear people talk about George Floyd, we talk about the man that murdered him. We talk about the three men that stood around, but all of us stood around. Every time something happened, we stood around. We sat and watched, and we took solace in the fact that it wasn't us that did it. The same thing those three officers saying, well, I'm not the one that killed him. But you watched and let it happen. So the question is, when people start coming around, because they're going to be coming around, and if I may be frank with you, you're going to hear some people right now tell you how much they love you, how much they've been thinking about you, how much they worry about you. Well, if you love me, show me. I, for those of you out here that are married, I don't know about you, but my wife don't want to just hear me tell me I love her. She'd like to see me show her sometimes. So telling people and then going back to your bad ways does nothing. But if you decide that you are going to be Paul, that you aren't going to be the three men that got left out the books, whose names don't even come up in the Bible, who we don't even remember, if you're going to be Paul, then this has got to turn to action. Because the murderers of George Floyd came up in a culture. That culture was in their police department. But that culture reflected their community. And that culture was pushed along by their chief. Their chief was hired by their city council. You know who hires your city council? You. So if you tell people that racism is OK, then they're going to be racist. If you tell people that demeaning people is OK, they're going to demean. If you tell them hatred is OK, if you continue to buy into the politics of division, then this is what's going to happen. So all I ask you to do is one simple thing. If somebody comes to you talking to you about how much they love you and all they want to do is divide you from everybody else, they don't love you. If somebody comes to you and tells you all lives matter, you tell them what Jesus said about the 99 sheep. If somebody comes to you and tries to explain to you why you should not like that guy over there, he's got a blue shirt, he's got an orange shirt, he's not as good as you, you've got to watch out for them. If that's all they can preach to you, then you need to go to another church. So what I ask you to do is take this energy. And remember one thing, tolerance is good because we need tolerance to get through this fight. We need black people. We need white people. We need brown people, Asians. I want you, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, I want you to be tolerant of other people. But you can't keep tolerating racist attitudes. And every time you vote, every time you stay home, every time you try to give an excuse for why you're supporting somebody, well, he's good on my taxes. How much does your money matter if everybody in your community that you buy stuff from is gone? So if you're serious, and I challenge all of you, those who have texted, those who have called, those who, I challenge you, if you are serious, then do one thing. You stop tolerating it. When it's your brother, when it's your mother, when it's your kids, when it's your coworkers, if they start this racist, hateful, bigoted, divisive talk, you tell them that's not welcome where you are. Because they've got every right under our Constitution to be racist. I'm fine with that. But they're going to be racist at home on somebody else's dollar. So I'm not taking away for somebody who's going to take from this. I'm talking about your rights. You got the right to be a racist. I got the right not to support you. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for what you've done. But again, this is June. What's going to matter when you're going to tell us what you're really serious about is in November. And this ain't making it political. I ain't said once, vote for Democrats, vote for Republicans. But I'm telling you, if you support people who are racist, if you back up people who are racist, if you follow people who are racist, and you don't say or do anything, then in the words of a man that I heard running from office, I'm not calling you a racist. But you seem to be calling you a racist. Thank you.